The Madness of Pelagius by Tsothenes The man who would be emperor of all Tamriel was born Thoris Pelagius Septim, a prince of the royal family of Wayrest in 119 of the Third Era, at the end of the glorious reign of his uncle, Antiochus I. Wayrest had been showered by much preference during the years before Pelagius's birth, for King Magnus was Antiochus's favorite brother. It is hard to say when Pelagius's madness first manifested itself, for, in truth, the first ten years of his life were marked by much insanity in the land itself. When Pelagius was just over a year old, Antiochus died, and a daughter, Kintira, assumed the throne to the acclaim of all. Kintira II was Pelagius's cousin, and an accomplished mystic and sorceress. If she had sufficient means to peer into the future, she would have surely fled the palace. The story of the War of the Red Diamond has been told in many other scholarly journals, but as most historians agree, Kintira II's reign was usurped by her and Pelagius's cousin Uriel, by the power of his mother Potema, the so-called Wolf Queen of Solitude. The year after her coronation, Kintira was trapped in Glenpoint and imprisoned in the Imperial dungeons there. All of Tamriel exploded into warfare as Prince Uriel took the throne as Uriel III, and High Rock, because of the imprisoned Empress's presence there, was the location of some of the bloodiest battles. Pelagius's father, King Magnus, allied himself with his brother Sephorus against the usurper emperor, and brought the wrath of Uriel III and Queen Potema down on Wayrest. Pelagius, his brothers and sisters, and his mother Euthelia fled to the Isle of Balfiera. Euthelia was of the line of Direne, and her family Mans is still located on that ancient isle even to this day. There is thankfully much written record of Pelagius's childhood in Balfiera, recorded by nurses and visitors. All who met him described him as a handsome, personable boy, interested in sport, magic, and music. Even assuming diplomats' lack of candor, Pelagius seemed, if anything, a blessing to the future of the Septim dynasty. When Pelagius was eight, Sephorus slew Uriel III at the Battle of Ichidag and proclaimed himself Emperor Sephorus I. For the next ten years of his reign, Sephorus battled Potema. Pelagius' first battle was the Siege of Solitude, which ended with Potema's death and the final end of the war. In gratitude, Sephorus placed Pelagius on the throne of Solitude. As king of solitude, Pelagius's eccentricities of behavior began to be noticeable. As a favorite nephew of the emperor, few diplomats to solitude made critical commentary about Pelagius. For the first two years of his reign, Pelagius was at the very least noted for his alarming shifts in weight. Four months after taking the throne, a diplomat from Ebenhart called Pelagius a hale and hearty soul with a heart so big it widens his waist. Five months after that, the visiting princess of Firsthold wrote to her brother that the kings gripped my hand and it felt like I was being clutched by a skeleton. Pelagius is greatly emaciated indeed. Sephorus never married and died childless three years after the Siege of Solitude. As the only surviving sibling, Pelagius's father Magnus left the throne of Wayrest and took residence at the imperial city as the Emperor Magnus I. Magnus was elderly, and Pelagius was his oldest living child, so the attention of Tamriel focused on solitude. 
By this time, Pelagius' eccentricities were becoming infamous. There are many legends about his acts as King of Solitude, but few well-documented cases exist. It is known that Pelagius locked the young princes and princesses of Sylvanar in his room with him, only releasing them when an unsigned declaration of war was slipped under the door. When he tore off his clothes during a speech he was giving at a local festival, his advisors apparently decided to watch him more carefully. On the orders of Magnus, Pelagius was married to the beautiful heiress of an ancient dark elf noble family, Cataria Raatham. Nordic kings who marry dark elves seldom improve their popularity. There are two reasons most scholars give for the union. Magnus was trying to cement relations with Ebenhart, or the Raatham clan hailed. Ebenhart's neighbor, Mornhold, had been a historical ally of the Empire since the very beginning, and the royal consort of Queen Baron Zaya had won many battles in the War of the Red Diamond. Ebenhard had a poorly kept secret of aiding Uriel III and Potema. The other reason for the marriage was more personal. Cataria was as shrewd a diplomat as she was beautiful. If any creature was capable of hiding Pelagius's madness, it was she. On the 8th of Second Seed, 145 of the Third Era, Magnus I died quietly in his sleep. Jolatha, Pelagius' sister, took over the throne of solitude, and Pelagius and Cateria rode to the imperial city to be crowned Emperor and Empress of Tamriel. It is said that Pelagius fainted when the crown was placed on his head, but Cateria held him up so only those closest to the thrones could see what had happened. Like so many Pelagius stories, this cannot be verified. Pelagius III never truly ruled Tamriel. Cateria and the Elder Council made all the decisions, and only tried to keep Pelagius from embarrassing all. Still, stories of Pelagius III's reign exist. It was said that when the Argonian ambassador from Black Rose came to court, Pelagius insisted on speaking in all grunts and squeaks, as that was the Argonian's natural language. It is known that Pelagius was obsessed with cleanliness, and many guests reported waking to the noise of an early morning scrub-down of the imperial palace. The legend of Pelagius, while inspecting the servants' work, suddenly defecating on the floor to give them something to do, is probably apocryphal. When Pelagius began actually biting, and attacking visitors to the imperial palace, it was decided to send him to a private asylum. Cateria was proclaimed regent two years after Pelagius took the throne. For the next six years, the emperor stayed in a series of institutions and asylums. On a warm night in sun's dawn, in his 34th year, Pelagius III died after a brief fever in his cell at the Temple of Kinnereth in the Isle of Bethany. Cateria I reigned for another 46 years before passing the scepter on to the only child she had with Pelagius, Cassander. Pelagius's wild behavior has made him perversely dear to the province of his birth and death. The second of sun's dawn, which may or may not be the anniversary of his death, records are not very clear, is celebrated as Mad Pelagius, the time when foolishness of all sorts is encouraged. And so, one of the least desirable emperors in the history of the Septim dynasty has become one of the most famous ones.